Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In these short educational video modules, we hope to cover a range of topics in basic and advanced ultrasound applications. It's my hope that through these ultrasound videos, we'll be able to improve the clinical care that we can provide to our patients at the bedside and come to the diagnosis more rapidly than using traditional testing. So without further delay, let's get right into today's module. Let's move on to a discussion of acute cholecystitis. Here we see a number of gallstones, and as most cases of cholecystitis in the ED are calculus or gallstone related, this would be a signature finding. Notice also the presence of a thickened gallbladder wall as referenced here with a small arrow. Notice here that it's much easier to see the anterior wall than the posterior wall of the gallbladder, and this is because the sound waves race through the gallbladder and light up the back wall, making it difficult to get a full sense of how thick it is. Now when I put the calipers down on the anterior gallbladder wall, I get a measurement of 4 millimeters. Most authorities define a thickened gallbladder wall as greater than 3 millimeters. So this meets the definition, and in fact this patient had a fever and a white count indicative of acute cholecystitis. When imaging a gallbladder with possible cholecystitis, it's always good to look in a long axis scan as shown here to the left, and a short axis scan as seen to the right. In both of these images, we note a large concretion of gallstones present, but notice the thickened gallbladder wall that I believe is much better seen here on the short axis scan to the right side. So I always swivel the probe from long to short just to go ahead and get a secondary assessment of how thick that gallbladder wall is. And if we still that last image down, looking in short axis, and measure that anterior wall, we can see that it comes in at 9 millimeters, very thickened, fulfilling the criteria of acute cholecystitis. Here's another image of a patient who presented with right upper quadrant pain and fever. And notice here the large amount of gallstones present within the lumen of the gallbladder. And what we see here is a thickened anterior gallbladder wall. And notice here that we can appreciate a very small black stripe of fluid in the interior part of the gallbladder wall. And in fact, this represents gallbladder wall edema. At surgery, the surgeons found that the wall of the gallbladder was significantly necrotic and edematous. So some of the other findings of acute cholecystitis in addition to a thickened gallbladder wall. Here's an elderly patient presenting with fever and right upper quadrant pain. And notice here the significant burden of gallstones is shown down by the neck of the gallbladder to the left. But let's look anterior to that anterior wall and we see a small stripe of pericholecystic fluid here. It's that dark stripe outlining the anterior wall of the gallbladder. So another signature finding in acute cholecystitis, and in fact, this patient had to go directly to the operating room for removal of the gallbladder. Here we're looking at that same gallbladder from a subcostal view, and again, we can appreciate the large concretion of gallstones present within the neck of the gallbladder, and note the posterior acoustic shadowing, and we can also see that stripe of fluid surrounding the anterior wall consistent with pericholecystic fluid. And sometimes that amount of pericholecystic fluid can be subtle, but that's a significant finding for acute cholecystitis. Here's another patient who presented with right upper quadrant pain and fever and had a great deal of pain when I pushed the probe into the right upper quadrant consistent with a sonographic Murphy sign. Notice the large amount of gallstones layering out along the back wall of the gallbladder, the gallbladder wall thickening of the anterior wall, and the presence of pericholecystic fluid, all consistent with acute cholecystitis. So thanks for tuning in to today's installment of Soundbites Cases. It's my hope that through this educational series, I'll be able to get out to you a number of ultrasound learning pearls that you can take to the patient's bedside tomorrow to improve clinical care and to arrive at the diagnosis more rapidly than using traditional testing. So I hope to see you in the future as Soundbites Cases returns and as we move on to discuss a range of interesting topics in bedside ultrasonography.